All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's see. What did we talk about last time? Uh, we was in Acts. And talking about how they all had everything in common. Selling their possessions. More was added to the congregation. They was preaching the word. Peter and them got persecuted just a little bit. You know, Who got persecuted? Peter and John. Yeah, right. Peter, right. Peter, Peter leading the charge. Right. So you see immediately after Yahushua died, Peter... Look something up for me. Look up um, upon this rock. I, I said my, my congreg our church is what it's going to say, but congregation. You know, you see immediately after Yahushua died, Peter started leading the charge. Remember, he he, uh, he looked at the man who was looking for some alms. We read about he looking for some alms. He was like, alms I have not for you. You know what I'm saying? But get up and walk. And the book say his leg strengthened, his ankle strengthened. Right? And the man just started walking. These people were looking around like, man, I haven't seen that man in my whole darn life. Then the next day he did more miracles, right? And then them people was people were just lined up in the streets. Just they thought, man, if Peter shadow darn hit me, you know what I'm talking about? They didn't look like, man, look, if the man darn shadow hit me, I'd be healed, right? So they look at him and he start being seen as like the leader of this thing, right? Hey, he starts seeing being seen like as the leader of this thing. So it, it changes things a little bit, right? And when they start looking at Peter. Peter had to come back to him. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, man, by the power of Yahushua, I did this. He had to kind of let him know, like, no, nah, let me tell you where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get to making no mistakes. By the power of Yahushua is how I did this. Right? So we look at Peter. You find that for me? Yeah, Matthew 16 and 18. Grab Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. It's Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Turn it off. And I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my congregation, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Right? So Peter, the name, his name Peter is like saying stone or rock, right? So he was like, yeah, well, I'm, he, he gave him a new name. He was like, I'm going to call you Peter. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my congregation. Right? So you see that Peter was designated. He may not have knew it at the time, but he designated like you the man. Like you, you about to run the show here. So Peter, that's why he stepped up immediately. It's like, okay, well, let's get it then. And he just started executing. He started trying to get it done, right? Grab, uh, grab first. Where we, where we leave off last week? We read First Peter, didn't we? Or did I imagine that? Mm, let's see. Did I imagine that? Yeah, we didn't read First Peter. Last All right, let's do First Peter then. Let's go First Peter chapter, uh, chapter one. Give me about verse uh, sixteen. Give me about give me about verse uh give me verse nine. It's first Peter chapter one, verse nine. Cause you have to you have to realize that Peter, when Yahushua, before Yahushua went up, what did he tell him to do? What he get what, what commandments did he give to the disciples? Right before he went up, at the beginning of Acts, Acts chapter one. Go make disciples. No, that was that was Matthew 28. But in Acts chapter one, what did he tell him? He said, he said. Stay here. He said, stay your butt here. Where were they? In Jerusalem. They were in Jerusalem. Why would he have to tell them to stay there? Because he's about to pour out his spirit. Oh, yeah. Right? He said, man, stay your butt here. He didn't tell them that just once either. He told them that in the Gospels as well, well before. But the message was to him, stay there. Because there were some things that had to happen. There were some miracles that had to happen. So that's what they did is they stayed. You see, their interaction is with who? 
What type of people? The Hebrews. Hebrews. Or the people that come to us as Hebrews or Israelites, rather. Right? They wasn't trying to, out there trying to deal with a whole bunch of folks, trying to go find people and all that. No, 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 no. I'm trying to wake my people up. I'm trying to teach my people. Right? And that was Peter. So if we look at Peter, give me give me uh first Peter chapter one, verse one. Watch this. Peter, an apostle of Yahushua the Messiah, to the strangers scattered throughout the To the who? Strangers. What are strangers? Who are we talking about when we say strangers? The Hebrews that live outside of the nation. Right? Typically, you're talking about Gentiles, aren't you? But watch what he say. He say what? Strangers in Israel? Scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. He's saying the strangers out there, right? He's saying the people that you in somebody else's land and you don't belong there. He's talking about our people, right? He's like, man, the people that's out there and that you in strange, you in they strange land, man, look, I'm trying to talk to you. Watch what he said about him. Drop on down to verse nine. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Uh-huh. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of the Messiah, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of the Messiah and the glory that should follow. You hear what he's saying? <laughs> he, he trying to explain. He is like, man, listen, all this stuff that y'all seeing now, man, this stuff was already told to us by the prophets. Then he tried to explain how the prophets felt about this thing. He was like, man, but listen, the prophets out here, they telling you what's going on, but they trying to figure it out. They searching like, how in the world is this going to be the Messiah? They trying to figure it out. The most I got giving them the words to speak. And they looking like, I'm going to say it, Lord. But how you going how you going to pull that thing off? Who that's going to be? What is that actually going to look like? They trying to figure out their own words. So Peter is kind of letting us know. These people didn't know what they were darn talking about. We got to look at the pot. You remember, you remember, we ain't got to get it, but you remember in John, I want to say chapter 11, right? John chapter 11 at the end, we had the high priest and the high priest where one man has to die so that the nation doesn't perish. It's expedient that one man die for the nation. Right? And what did, what did, what did the writer, what did John say about that when he said that? He said, this him speaking unknowingly prophesied about the death of Yahushua. That was so prophecy. Par par paraphrasing, of course. But, you know. <clears throat> Book told us that was prophecy that the high priest prophesied. This is the same high priest that got Yahushua killed. And in that statement was trying to kill Yahushua. And not for the right reasons. Right? So then he was prophesying, not knowing what he was saying, but he prophesied. Right? That's how this stuff works. These prophets are doing the most I God give them a vision and they talk about what they see. Sometimes they see darn figs and, and fruit or animals. Right. That's what they see. They don't know. They don't know what this represents or know what this means. That's why Moses was different. He was like, I'll talk to Moses plainly. Yeah, yeah, Moses didn't have to figure out nothing. He knew. Do you remember what Moses, what he gave Moses? Uh, oh, grab Exodus chapter uh, 25. Let's just see what he gave Moses. Let's just see the difference. When you talk about prophecy and when you talk about what you get Moses, watch this. This is Exodus chapter 25. I don't know if 25 what I want. It actually might be 35, but let's see what 25 say. It's Exodus chapter 25. Give me verse. Just give me verse 32. Matter of fact, give me verse 1. Exodus chapter 25, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that gives it willingly. Jump on down to verse 10. And, and they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof. And a cubit look at, and a half look at the, the precision breath. that the Most High God given him. A cubit and a half at the height thereof. I want it to be this long. You know what I'm saying? You make it this long. You know what? Go ahead and make it a cubit and a half high. Precision. Right? It ain't no dark like, man, maybe God want me to... No, 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 no. It's precision. Mo Moses could go to the Most High God and be like, man, look, this is what the dude did. Oh, no, for that, you want to kill him. <laughs> right? It's different. It wasn't like, like, what prophet do you know could make God give them a vision? Right? It's, like, it's just like, 
I want to talk to God right now. Let me go holler at him. It didn't work like that. Right? You had a people would have to come to the prophet and then the prophet would inquire of God for him and wait for an answer. Moses did be like, I feel like hollering at God real quick. You know what I'm saying? What happened? When Moses wanted to talk to God, where'd he go? He went to the tabernacle. Yeah. He said, you go to the tent and holler at him. And what happened when he hollered at him? He spoke right to him, right then and there. But what happened though? Y'all remember? It was a cloud. That cloud came down. Name a prophet. Why would the cloud have to come down? Because most of our God's in it. Y'all get y'all butts darn back. Y'all remember? Y'all remember when we set up the temple? Yeah. What happened? The cloud came and they had to get out. Everybody get your butt out. <laughs> if Moses was there, Moses been like, where y'all going the wrong direction? What y'all, where y'all going? <laughs> I know you're not about to talk to the most high God. guy. He's different. That's a different guy. What happened when what happened when uh what happened when uh 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 uh, uh, uh when y'all was sure, you know what I'm saying, was transfigured. You know what I'm saying? What happened then? Moses was there. Him and Elijah was having a regular old dog conversation. Y'all sure is the temple. So Moses right. was there. And the cloud came. Yeah. Most of God had to make that thing quit. They look like, you know what I'm saying? What you should we, you know what I'm saying? We, you know what I'm saying? We prepare, you know what I'm saying? Like what they say, uh, should we prepare a bed or something? What they say? A tent, you know what I'm saying? You see, you know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and prepare a tent for these boys, you know what I'm saying? Is that nut? He's like, man, you know, to cut this stuff. You people ain't got no business here in the first place. You know, I was just trying to show y'all something real quick. Y'all ain't got to, now you running your darn mouth. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, cut that short. You know what I'm saying? Go on, get your butts up out of here. You ain't worked here long enough to chill with me. You know what I'm saying? You trying to build a tip. You don't shut your darn mouth. You trying to hang out with me and Moses. You ain't. You know what I'm saying? Boy, they might have messed around and thought they were darn Moses. I can talk in a club. Now, you can't talk in no darn club. Boy, you better sit your butt down. Right? So, everybody else, we looking at it like, what is this going to be? And that's what Peter is trying to explain. He's trying to let you know, like, like the he's he's trying to explain the privilege that we have. He's like, listen, the, this stuff is prophesied before, but do you understand your privilege? Like, even them who prophesied it before didn't know what you know, right? Like, you got to see it and have it explained to you. Like, we are in a different. You were just talking about Job before we got started, right? You look at Job. A lot of people look at Job like, mm -mm, Job. He is self-righteous and all that. Like, shut your door. You don't know what you're talking about. Job had no idea of the information. You know what Job was trying to do? Maintain his innocence. The man out of pure ignorance was looking like, the best I know is I'm supposed to obey the man, and that's it. So when he looked at it, like, only thing I've ever been told is obey the man. And what did I do? Oh, please, it ain't no way in the world the man can condemn me. That's his position. He said, look, that, see, people look at that like you being self-right. No, that's trusting God. These people don't know him. He's sitting there telling them, like, all I know about God is he said, if I obey him, I should be good. I'm not good. Something either I don't know or something else is wrong. I tell you what, though. I know he's right, so I'm going to continue to obey him. And these people flip that around and they say that he's a sinner. Like, no, the most high God used him to show that it's more complex than just your physical being. Job was looking at, I should be prosperous. I should be good. Shouldn't nothing touch me because I'm righteous. He used Job to teach us all. That boy, I worked your darn butt and you be righteous and you got to keep walking because it's a lot that you don't darn understand. Yeah, Jeremiah life was tough. That's how I go. Boy, I tear your butt darn up and you got to keep obeying. Most of the guy, man, I don't care nothing about this existence. That thing is just mercy upon you. I'm just get, if you enjoy your life now, that's mercy. You know what I'm about to get you when this done? You ain't need you. Ain't, this, you ain't even gonna remember this foolishness. Care nothing about what I'm saying. Stress myself over trying to keep everybody happy here. Right. No, you do what I do. What I tell you to do. Don't even worry about it. After that, after that, you are gonna be all right. Boy, get away from that court. Right? 
So anyway, that's what Peter trying to explain, right? Peter trying to like, man, y'all in a privileged position. Let's go back. He like, man, y'all in a privileged position. He like, man, these people, they was prophesying about this stuff. The stuff that y'all witnessing, stuff that y'all see, stuff that y'all experience, stuff that we telling y'all. Man, they was prophesying about this stuff. But they was searching like, man, how do we, like, how is this going to happen? Like, how? So he's in they searching. They trying to figure it out. Like, what is this? What is the most, what is, what in the world the most high God just had me say? Like, man, I prophesy in the name of you. Who, what in the world is y'all trying to get me to say? Like, I don't get it. Right? And he looking like, man, the stuff that they didn't get, man, we get to see here live action. We got to witness this stuff live action. Right? And he said, now we telling this stuff to you. Watch this. Keep going. And unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Right? <laughs> he telling, he trying to explain to you up to this point, the angels were trying to figure this stuff out. Right? Y'all woke up one day and this stuff just getting explained to y'all. Us too, right? All of us. We just wake up and we got the whole book yeah, right we here. Get, we get to read it. Yeah. Right? But he trying to let you know, before that, the angels was looking like, I don't know how you going to pull that out. You know what's so cold? Nobody cares to read it. It is, though. He didn't make a fool out of it. Listen, got, he going to give it to you every way just so he can condemn you the world. got all of it at your disposal. Is, and they literally, like, cast it behind them. That's I'm going to give it to you with a man of God give, doing miracles. I'm going to give it to you with, 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 with no book. You know what I'm saying? You got to hear it out loud. I'm going to give it to you with a whole bunch of people that know the word. And it's an uprising. And everybody cheering and having a lot of fun. I'm going to give it to you in oppression. And you silent. Ain't nobody got it. And I'm going to give it to you in the same way with it written down right in front of you. And guess what? No matter what happened, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be rebellious. That way, when he get done, he'd be like, pick your poison. I done gave it to y'all people every way. You know what I'm saying? Guess what y'all did? Rebelled against me. He's like, no, nah, I don't want to hear none of them excuses. All right? Keep going. Well, for gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahushua the Messiah. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of conversation. Mm -hmm. Because it when they say conversation, what does that mean? Uh, your conduct. That's behavior, conduct, right? It's an old English, right? Old English, when they say conversation, they're talking about behavior. They're not talking about talking, running your darn mouth, right? They're talking about behavior, right? Keep going. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. That's right. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judge according to every man's work. Mm -hmm. Or every man's uh, feelings. Every man's work. What every man tried to do his best. Every man's that work. That's what they tell you. They like, man, just try. Ain't that what they tell you? Just try. I mean, give it your best. Ain't nobody. Now, listen. Ain't nobody perfect. Right? Only thing God wants you, what God wants from you? Just oh, try your best. <laughs> that's, all, that's all he wants. Just try your darn best. So you know what message that give? I ain't going to hit it anyhow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't going to hit it anyhow. So I'm just going to try pretty hard. And then they be like, well, you know, you farther along your walk than I am. I still got some work to do. Yeah, it's like, or like man, you, like, man, how long you been doing it? Five years. Everybody See, man, not like, where you are. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's different. You're like, listen, man, you keep playing these darn games. Some people get a, a day. Some people get darn 20 years. You don't know which one you getting. Forget all that, you know what I'm saying? Don't look at the time. I be telling people, don't be looking at no darn time. You don't know what you get. You do not know what you get. You know what you better do? If you know, do it right. That's it. That's it. Somebody else might know their whole darn life and never do right. And at the very end, they get it. Right? It might be another person that only get a couple weeks to get it before they pass. Right? What you going to look at? You might well get that thing right and then state your argument with the Most High God when you get up there. I seen that That's how I look at it. It's like, listen, I'm going to get it right. And then when I see the Most High God, I'll be like, look, I got it right. But that thing wouldn't have been fair. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just see if I'll have that mind to have that argument after I get there. But guess what I'm not about to do? I'm not about to sit here and try to have an argument now and then not get it right. That's just stupid. It don't make no sense. I'm going to get in there first. And if I still got the mind to want to argue with God, then I'll do it. Something tells me 
I ain't even gonna care by that time. You know what I'm saying? So I'm telling you to be like, ah, no biggie. You know what I'm saying? No biggie. Look at this. This is nice. You know what I'm saying? No biggie. Don't even worry about it. You walk around, you gonna argue with guy, you're gonna see gold. You know what I'm saying? Go streets, street paved with gold, books that look like dark glass that you see through. You see all this stuff burned down around you. You know what I'm saying? You see the thing. You walking through a darn wilderness desert. All of a sudden, you just see darn, just grass and darn, darn trees springing up and all. Like, we ain't got nothing to worry about. I mean, like, you know what? I don't even need to talk to you no more. You know what I'm saying? You, you walking up to the prophet. I got a bone to pick with you. Walking up to, I got a bone. Ask God. Is that a banana that you popped? Don't, don't even worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Give me the banana. You know what I'm talking about? How a banana just pop out? This thing was a barren desert. And a banana just popped out in the middle. Give me some of that darn banana. I like bananas. You know what I'm talking about? These people make a darn fool out of themselves. Talking about God just wanting you. You've never seen a Bible verse in the world that say anything about try your darn best. The man don't even think like that. He don't, they ain't even, they ain't even, it don't matter. Did, do what I told you to do. Hit the mark is what he trying to tell you to do. I don't see him tell you to try the best. You try your best. Your best might not be enough. Let me tell you something. Your best is not enough. You got to try his best. That's the only way to get in. You know, and you know what would drive me crazy about this stuff? Christian be the first one to say, you know what? It's not you. You got to rest in the power of God. They're the first ones to say that stuff, which is true, right? Like, what does that mean? But then they're going to turn around and tell you, just try your best. Well, hold on. Well, I'm still trying. They, they tell you, no works. You know what I'm saying? It has, it's, by no, they, they, it's by no effort of your own. Then they turn around and tell you, try your best. You darn hypocrite. <laughs> no, stick with the first one. It's by no effort of your own. So if you don't get it, that means you're a darn sinner. Because if you got it, that means the most high God did it for you. Try your darn best. You turn from darn sin. Just like the man told you you could do. You don't do it, that means you don't believe him. Because he said you could do it. He said, with God, all things are possible. How are you going to sit here and tell you you could do it, you don't do it, you, you sitting there saying it's impossible, and you're going to say you believe him? Make a fool out of yourself. Man, just sitting there like what I, I just told you. Who strengthens me? Except turn from sin. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? When it comes to that, I don't know where Christ is. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't. Listen, when it comes to turn from sin, I ain't darn heard from Christ. Peter was like, well, who could be saved? He was like, with well, God, all things are possible. I got that. Did Peter come back and be like, oh, no, 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 that's nonsense, God. He ain't run his mouth again to his like, I don't get it. All right. But you know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I tried to make it work. I bet you he got it after that. After y'all two had died and came back, I bet you he got it. You see, that boy ain't had no wavering in his darn step. Let's make it happen. It's a man of darn God. These people be running their darn mouth, boy. Woo! These people be running their mouth. Let's see. Keep going. I don't even see how these people feel comfortable by it. It's only because they don't believe the word. No, you, you ain't got no fear. Because it's like, if you fear the most I got, man, I don't see how you can feel comfortable saying some of the stuff. Not saying it. Goodness gracious. Teaching it. Oh, you ain't just taking yourself down. You taking down nations of people like this? Teaching them crap? Like, whoo. That's just some... I, I could never stand up somewhere knowingly teaching something wrong about the most I got. That's crazy. He's like, I'm going to teach something that I don't even that's nuts to me. That's just crazy. Like, nah, I'm just nuts. You just, you just can't get me to teach something knowingly wrong about the most. That's crazy. Matter of fact, if I teach something wrong and I learn it, that thing got me shivering. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, now nah, we got to get up and clean that up. You know what I'm saying? I got to get back. You know what I'm saying? Turn the camera back on. Let's figure this out. Broadcast it. Let me find out something that we've been teaching is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Somebody come to me and be like, yeah, this, that, and other. We ain't done it before. Long time ago, we didn't done it before, you know what I'm saying? Let me find out. Oh, no, nah, let's clean that up. Broadcast it. Actually, we were wrong. We said that we used to teach this way. Now, this is what we teach. You know what I'm saying? I didn't delete a video. Like, now nah, that thing was a mess. I ain't, got no, I ain't got no time to be putting no lies out there. 
Who accountable to that? Most like I ain't playing with nobody who stand up here and position themselves as a darn leader and a teacher of his people. You think that they people to take that thing lightly, just you know what I'm saying, get up here and just play around. That ain't no joke. Most serious thing you can ever do. I don't care what your job and your your hobbies are, boy. It's the most serious thing you can ever do. You think you escape because ain't nothing happening right now. Think you escape because you don't feel no you know, no immediate punishment. That's all right. It's coming. Nothing coming. It's coming. You wait your turn. It's coming. Most our God just he. Oh, that's a merciful God. Ah, that madman is merciful, gracious. People just hate it too. They hate how you hate the fact that somebody just being gracious towards you. Whew. He gonna light some butt up. Keep going. Let's see. Wherefore, gird up your loins, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end of the, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Uh huh. But as he which has called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. That's right. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Mm -hmm. And if you call on the Father who without respect of persons judge according to every man's work, mm -hmm. pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold mm -hmm. from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. And that's vain behavior. Received from the tradition of your fathers. Keep going. But with the precious blood of the Messiah as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, mm -hmm. who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, mm -hmm. who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Mm -hmm. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit. Seeing that you have done what? Purified your souls. By doing what? In obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. It is no other way. I don't care what these people tell you and try to explain to you and all the darn tricky little voodoo they be trying to do in front of these darn pulpits. Let me tell you something. There is no other way to see the most high God in the end other than obedience to the son. If you don't have that obedience to the son, your soul is not purified. Period. There's no other route. There's only one way to get in. you got to come through the sun. And when it comes through the sun, that don't mean say a darn prayer. That don't mean feel sorry. I was listening to some people. They said it was politicians. They're saying, you know, um, uh, Trump, Trump and his supporters, you know, because, you know, they, they see him as wilding out. You know, they ran up on this tongue. It's like Trump and his supporters, they need to repent. Right. And some people had some some commentary about that. And it's like repent. This is they're making this religious. It's almost religious how the Democrats are acting about that. And they say, they say, yeah, repent. That means like, like you're begging for forgiveness. Now listen to him. Like, no, nah, he said it right. You know what I'm saying? He said it right. I mean, you have got to stop what you're doing. Turn around. That what he's saying. The man, the, the Democrats said it right. He like, hey, boy, got to repent. Cause from the Democrat part of it, the Republicans got to stop and turn the other direction. Stop doing all this foolishness they doing and stop. I was like, that's what the book is saying. You got to stop. But you know what? Just like them Republicans that were looking at him like, I don't know. He's saying it wrong. Y'all don't know what this book talking about. Y'all think he think y'all think repent mean beg for forgiveness. Most like God don't require you to darn beg for no darn forgiveness. Most like God require you require you to stop doing sin. Just stop sinning and ask for forgiveness. You ain't got to sit there. P -p -p please forgive me, Lord. And just begging them every day. You know, if you do that every day, what is that significant of? Double minded. Not just double minded. Changing. If you sitting here begging the most high God to forgive you every day, when it's written in the book that if you repent from your sins, you forgive him. That means you don't believe him. Like, what you still asking for? You did what I told you to do, and I told you you're forgiven. Like, this is what I told you to do, and I told you if you do that, you're forgiven. And every day you begging me for something that's already done? Oh, you just didn't know it was done. Only reason you didn't know it, because ain't I told you. Only reason you didn't know, because you didn't believe it. Most of all, let me tell you something. There's no way to get by. Most of all, God going to catch your butt up. If you ain't doing it right, he going to catch your butt up. Because it's too much text. It's too much written. He covered every side of it. 
So it ain't no, it doesn't like, it's like, it's like when we build new policies and procedures in my department, like I'm, I'm always built because I'm new to the department. So I'm always like, okay, no, I don't like how this is. I got to make it fit me. So I'm changing stuff. But you know what happened with me? Because I ain't God. Oh, I didn't even think of that. So somebody tried to follow my procedure and they'd be like, oh, no, this don't work in this situation. I'm like, oh, I didn't think of that. Okay, let me, let me, let me rework it. You know what I'm saying? Let's add this part in. Let me tell you something. <laughs> God ain't got to do that. This thing is covered. So every little loophole these people do, be trying to come up with, they don't know it because they ain't read it. Right? But there's a verse. That's why we can, that's why these people are looking at me. How y'all know y'all right? Because it's covered. It's there. If you just take the time. Like it take a lot of time like now. Cracking insurance policy that you don't ever read. Yeah, that's all it is. The terms and conditions. Don't nobody ever read them. But I bet you, you, tell, you try, all them people right now, going back to politics, all these Republicans got their butt kicked off of Twitter. Donald Trump himself got, got kicked off of Twitter, Facebook. Look, they got a they got this like this uh the Republican Twitter, that's what I call it. They got the Republican Twitter, right? It's called Parlor, right? So Parlor is its own website, it's its own app, right? Let me tell you how cold these folks is. The Apple Store, the Google Play Store, everybody said we are no longer servicing your app. Get your Republican butt out of there. Let people figure out how to get your app. You really can't get an app outside of those two, right? Say, okay, that's done. Then they still got their website. Almost like half of the world get their website stuff through Amazon, right? They get their website space through Amazon, like almost half of the world, right? Get what Amazon said. We ain't servicing your website no more. We'll give you, we'll give you X amount of days to figure out where you're going to go next, right? We'll, take, we'll retain all your stuff, but you can't host it on our stuff no more. So they site, all they stuff got in a moment. All they stuff got darn shut down, right? Guess how they can do that? I got terms and conditions. And when y'all ran up on the darn capital, and when y'all saying the this is how they this is how they do it. We don't support violence. A bunch of people ran up on the capital, right? Well, they ran up on the capital because the election is supposedly rigged in their mind, right? Y'all are on Twitter. And on your website and on your app saying that the election is ripped. Therefore, you are supporting violence and we can't have that. It's dangerous. You guys are supporting terrorists, this, that, and other. Shut all they butts down. Why? Terms and conditions. You think these folks read it? It's my platform. These are my rules. Guess what? You got to follow them. So what do you think? How do you think the most high God going to be? If these true people got it like this, you think they less shrewd than the most, uh, most high God? I mean, you think they more shrewd than the most high God? Nah, most high God going to get your butt. Right? Most high God going to get your butt. This is his rules. These his terms and conditions. Your butt ain't even read. Right? And he ain't going to kick you off an app. <laughs> it's a little different. Them boys got off easy. You yeah. get kicked off of You ain't even got to go to jail. Yeah, this is a little, this is a little different. You tear up the Capitol, they got to go to jail? Bro, that's crazy. No, they putting their butts in jail. Yeah, we'll see. They've been rounding them up, but nevertheless, they should have should have went to jail that night. Right. You know what I'm saying? You look at it, the only reason they put them in jail because they ran up on other white folks. They ran up on them rich white folks. You know what I'm saying? You see, you see them folks, you look at them pictures. You know what I'm saying? Them, them politicians up in there nervous. Boy, them boys, you know what I'm saying? Democrat, they up in there nervous. They, you know what I'm saying? Walking out, had to get escorted out. They had nervous. They don't like that stuff. Well, let me tell they you. looked at it like, man, the nerve of these people run up. My granddaddy would have told me that was a day in the life of a black man in the South. They don't know nothing about that. No, nah, they don't know nothing. That's the only reason they punish them, you know? Go, uh... Keep going. Let's see what else we got. Who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Okay. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart or fervent, pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. Mm -hmm. The grass withers, 
and the flower thereof falls away. Mm -hmm. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this right. is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the chapter. Keep going. All right. Watch what you say here. I like this one. This one, this one Wherefore, laying aside all malice. He said, laying aside all malice. And all guile. And all guile. And all hypocrisy. And all hypocrisy. And envies. And envy. And evil speaking. And evil speaking. As newborn babies. As if you was a newborn baby. Desire the sincere milk of the word. I just want the pure milk of the Most High God's that you word. you may grow thereby. I just want the pure milk of the Most High God's word. Remember what Paul was telling us about milk? That's the basic, the principle. He's like, just give me the pure principles. Or the writer of Hebrews. When did Paul say that? Right, yeah, writer of Hebrews is what I meant to say. Yeah. Right? He said, just give me the pure milk of the word. Right? Watch what he's saying that. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. He said, listen, <laughs> then he put that condition on there. I mean, that, that ought to be what you want. If you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Because otherwise, you haven't tasted that the Lord was gracious. Therefore, you haven't had grace. Therefore, you're still a sinner. Right? Keep going. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Watch this. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice. A what? Sacrifices. A spiritual house. A holy priesthood. He said, so you also are built up a spiritual house and a what? A holy priesthood. And what else? To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahushua the Messiah. So he called them a holy priesthood. I don't know where I heard that before, but keep going. Wherefore all also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, mm -hmm. precious, and he that believes on him shall not be confounded. Mm -hmm. Unto you, therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, that same is made the head of the corner. Mm -hmm. And the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, mm -hmm. even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Mm -hmm. But you are a chosen generation. He said you are a what? A chosen generation. And again, he calls them what? A royal priesthood. A I holy nation. We are heard that. A chosen generation. A royal priesthood in a what nation? A holy nation. A, a holy nation. People. A what people? A peculiar people. A what? Peculiar people. Where have we heard these things before? Exodus. Yeah, right. Let's grab Exodus chapter 19. Help find it for me. I don't know exactly where it's at. It's Exodus chapter 19. We'll figure out what verse in a second. Verse 9, maybe? see it mm -mm. all right let's start at verse one it's in there uh verse six verse five we'll start at verse five all right this is uh exodus chapter 19 verse five now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, mm -hmm. for all the earth is mine, and you shall be unto me a what a kingdom of priests a what a holy nation these are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. He said a kingdom of priests. Another way to say that? Royal priesthood. And he said a holy nation. Let's go back to Peter. Watch this. So now we, we read this because we say, who is Peter talking to? 
He talked to strangers, right? But he's quoting to them what God said about them. That lets you know he's talking to the Yisrael. He's talking to the strangers, Yisrael. Mm -hmm. Right? Keep going. It's Peter. It's uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse what? Nine. It's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. What the book say? But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's right. Which in time past were not a people. but He said, which in time past was what? We're not a people. Where have we heard this before? In Hosea. Hosea, didn't he say? Right. The same people who I said are not my people, I will say. You're the sons of the living God. Watch this. But are now the people of God. Which hmm. has not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Where have we heard that before? Remember? Hosea had two kids. Right. One was not a people, not my people. Another one was no mercy. No mercy. Right. right? So he quote them back to him and let him know, hey, lost tribes of Israel, I'm writing this unto you. These are the things that the Most High God said to you. And why would Peter be writing this? Because he's running the show. Right? He's running the show like, oh, okay, well, let me get the lost tribes. Let me focus on the Hebrews. It's important that we go over this because eventually we're going to get to Paul. And we have to be able to look at this from our mindset as Hebrews in the land, Israelites in the land. This was a very foreign thing for us. What do you mean? You, you focusing all your energy on the Gentiles? But that's your objective? Oh, that don't make no difference. I, like, no, <laughs> I never seen, we've never seen nothing like that. Like, it's, not, it's, it's never, like, that's not, there's no precedent for that. You look at, like, you know, us, we be looking at it like, nah, prophets got to be subject to the prophets. You know, that thing will be spelled out in scripture. So it's difficult to see it. Now, this said, it is in scripture, right? It's all, it's all through prophecy that that got to happen. But they wasn't thinking about that. They were just thinking about nobody has ever done what you're doing right now. And you trying to tell me that's coming from God. That's, that's just difficult, right? And it goes against our culture. And then we got to look at the people that we think are filthy. And it's just like, yeah, my boy came to me today. He looked like, you know, he hesitated to say it too. He was like, you know, what'd you say, son? What'd you say to me today about the pepperoni? Now, you don't want to say it now, huh? I made you feel ashamed. Y'all feel ashamed. He is like, he is like, sometimes I wish we could be like, what do you say? What'd you say? He is like, he is like, I know we're already Hebrews. <laughs> but he was like, sometimes I wish we could be like, then he stopped himself. Then he's like, like, eat pepperoni. <laughs> I was like, boy, don't you ever try to be with like the, you know what I'm saying, want to be with these people yet. I think that's, that's the game though. Most high, the most high God give us something. What I tell you he give us? What's the word I taught you? You remember it or did you forget already? <laughs> Superior. What does that mean? <laughs> you forgot already? Yeah. It means better. He gave us something that was superior. There is pizza, uh, That's what he said next. He was like, well, what about Uncle T's pepperoni? Turkey. I was like, I knew it. I, I knew it. We eat turkey pepperoni. You know what I'm saying? Then he was like, no, now he got he had your back. He had your back. He was like, he was like, no, it's not regular pepperoni. He like, I don't like that pepperoni. He is like, but he said, he's like, it's I was like, is it turkey? He's like, no, not turkey. I was like, beef? He's like, yeah, yeah, that was it. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. Well, that one's okay then. Son. We eat the beef summer sausage. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like that's the allure, right? You put all this stuff that really ain't food. You put all this lifestyle that really ain't a lifestyle. And you put all this stuff around people. And then you put the multitudes on it. And we start looking at it like, well, everybody do it. He got to be around his cousin. Just now, uh, I left out. They have they having a, a, a birthday party for my nephew. All pepperoni pizza. They had no cheese, huh? So as I'm walking out, my brother, he asked me, uh, can he have a slice of pizza before he go? I'm like, not with no darn pepperoni on it. I was like, mess with him. I was like, defile <laughs> every one of you. You know what I'm saying? Just messing with him. You know what I'm saying? But that's what sparked the conversation because he's looking at it like I'm the eyeball out here. I'm the only one. Like, if I did want some pizza, I'm the only one who can't have a pizza because it got pepperoni on it. But that's the position they put us in. Yeah. 
It don't matter, son. No matter what, we uphold what the Most High God say. And that's a, there's a glory in that. That's what he mean. When the book say be holy, that means be separated, be different. You be apart from these people. And don't just be different just to be different. You be different according to the book. Right? Let's see. Let's keep going. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. That's right. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. All right, your behavior. Right? That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be your they they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Right? What do you, what is the day of visitation? What does that mean? The end. Day of visitation is the end? That's when, or when they die. That's when they die. <laughs> You, it's important that we understand what he's telling us right now. Yeah. He said, listen, read that one more time. He said, you have conduct that they, you said, make sure your conduct is honest, right? But they going to speak evil upon it. But you keep your conduct right that they can give God glory in the day of visitation. In other words, in the day that your butt dies. Do you understand the gravity of what he just said? You mean tell me, I got to keep it right. These people are going to look at me keeping it right and be like, yo, but wrong. And then I'm going to die and they're going to be like, praise God. Can you imagine that? That's how it works. That's what we saw with y'all. Sure. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. That's what we saw with y'all. Sure. As soon as y'all sure die, what they say. Truly, that was the son of God. But you couldn't notice that two seconds before that. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't know. Like I do all. You couldn't know. He's like, wait, don't kill him. <laughs> thanks. I just figured it out. <laughs> yeah, thanks. 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 <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot. You know, it's like that's that's how it works though. Like that has to. The, the what I love about this is because the stuff that sometimes we struggle with or we complain about or this that and the other, like if we believe the word right and we look at it. That's how it has to be. Right? It's like if you force yourself to just believe the word and then make your conduct adhere to what you believe, that's how it has to be. Like, of course. Of course these people ain't gonna believe me. Of course they're gonna say I'm a liar. Of course they're gonna try to pick out any little dirt that they can find on me. Of course, like, of course. What other way it gonna be? But you know what? If I stay upright. It ain't about my glory. Because if it's about my glory, I want them to tell me I'm right right here while I'm living. You know how they say, give me my flowers now. You know what I'm saying? If it's about my glory, I need that now. Right? But when you recognize, like, oh, this ain't got nothing to do with me. The man got to get the glory. Okay, I'll die. And when you die, guess what? Everybody want to say nice things about you. So that's when they can be honest with themselves and be like, be truthful. That man was a cold. That was a bad boy there. You know what I'm saying? That boy might have been. You know what I'm saying? That boy might have been the one. You know what I'm talking about? That's how they look at it. They wouldn't dare say it while you're alive because that condemns them. They wait until your butt can't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Till you done. Oh, man. That might have been it there. I mean, never just said a bad word. I ain't never heard them do that. I ain't never seen them dead sit there in front of your, in your funeral. Although to your face, they'll say something totally different. That's just how it goes. That's part of the game. That's part of what we what we asking for. We got to know what we're getting into. Because not everybody is built for it, clearly. Right? So we got to position ourselves and be like, okay, what are we going to do? This is what comes with it. And yes, it hurts. And we might have weak moments. And that's okay. Be honest with yourself and be honest with God. But you keep moving forward. You can't let this stuff crush you. Because if it crushes you, you're done. You got to be able to fall on the rock. That's the only way it works. It crushes you, you're done. There's no coming back from being crushed. You got to fall on the rock and just be broken. Either way, that thing hurt. It's painful. But at least one you can come back from. Keep going. Let's see what else we're working with. I'm telling you, it boy Peter, all these epistle letters, boy, I'll tell you, this is where it's at here. This is the gold here. They break it down. You know what I'm saying? Say it to you plainly. You know what I'm talking about? Keep going. Watch this. 
Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, mm -hmm. whether it be of the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them. For that the do what? Well. For the praise of them that do well. Uh-huh. So he said, the, 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 read that one more time. He said, submit yourself to the submit ordinance of man. to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Uh-huh. Whether it be to the king as supreme. Right. So he said, whether it be to the king as supreme that do what? Or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Right. So whether you're talking to the king as supreme, submit yourself, or to the governors that come in to punish your butt because you're what? Evildoer. Submit yourself. Okay, keep going. And for the praise of them that do well. Okay. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. That's it. They, that's, that's the only thing we're here for. We want to remove every excuse. We want to continue to obey because they're going to call us liars. They're going to call us They're going to call us stupid. They're going to do whatever they're going to do, right? To try to knock us off our square. Same thing with Job. We were talking about Job, right? That's what they were trying to do to Job. They weren't trying to in their mind, but that's what the devil was trying to do to Job. They were, Job, he was, trying to put, he was trying to compromise Job, right? Put Job in a position where Job would just be like, oh, forget it. Ain't that big of a deal. Let me just, my, you know, I might as well just do this or do that, right? But Job refused. And that's our, that's our order, right? That's what we have to do. It's like, no, nah, we got to refuse. Like, no matter who coming up to us and be like, man, you wrong. That's what all Job's friends are coming up to him saying. Like, oh, but you wrong. You messed up. You can keep trying to maintain your innocence. Don't you know that everybody, you know what I'm saying, that you would have, don't you, don't you, don't you. So Job was like, man, look, I mean, surely in my younger days I sinned. You know what I'm saying? Like the man, he was like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're trying to go back to my younger days, sure. You know what I'm saying? But he said, I made a pact with my eyes not even to look at the young ladies. He was like, man, y'all don't know what you, when I was a child, maybe. You know what I'm saying? But when I was an adult, man, I, what you mean? The man said, I repented and I've been walking upright. I ain't about to let you knock me off my stuff. They looking like, man, all right. Don't you know that, you know what I'm saying? All the friends just kind of come to it and trying to, because they looking at it like, they doing it from an honest place themselves, right? But they looking at it like, well, bad things happen to bad people. Right? They just had this simplistic view. It's like, bad things happen to bad people. You got to be like, why are you trying to, you know what I'm saying? Just humble yourself and just, you know what I'm saying? And it makes sense what they saying. If you read, if you read what they said, if take it out of context, yeah. everything they saying is right. It's not that it's not that what they were saying were wrong. It was misapplied. That's why I love the book of Job, because it's like it's such a perfect picture of a lot of the conversation. A lot of these Christians, they reading from the same Bible. As long as they stay very, very close to that Bible, what they're saying is not wrong. They just misapply it. You be using this verse, interpreting, you know what I'm saying? Is this the situation? And you're like, no. <laughs> no, you're missing a lot. Right? And that's the same thing that his friend, Joe's friends, were doing. He, what Peter is trying to explain to us right now, is he basically saying, you got to shut they butt up. And the only way you can shut them up is by well doing. By doing the right thing. And it might cost you your life to do it. But he is like, man, whether it's the king that's coming to you, whether the king sends some governors to punish you, either way, you do the right thing. And you submit yourself. That's why when we just read that Peter went to jail, did Peter just break out of jail? No. Angel came and got him. You, if you remember, he thought he was having a vision. He didn't realize that this was a real thing when he was walking out. But the angel came and got him. He didn't have to pick a lock. He didn't pick, We're going to read about Paul later and see what the difference is in his situation. Because you have to make yourself subject. You shut they butt up. You make a little mistake like that. It's a little mistake. God, you, oh, you praying. You remember they was praying when we get to Peter Paul. We gonna we gonna go into it. They was praying. Doors just open up. What you think he praying for? You know what type of you type you know what type of discipline that it take? Cause you can easily interpret that and be like, oh, thank God. You know what I'm talking about? Let me get up by. Cause in your mind, that's what I want to happen. This is what I've been praying for, and boom, it happened. But you got to have enough wisdom in the most high God to say, if God going to do it, he can't go against his word. How how he going to open up this gate for me when Peter just told me that I got to keep subject? 
only way that thing can go over is the most high God himself or send an angel or a man of God to say, you come out. Then it's like, okay, I'm obeying God. Right? If that don't happen, they just open up. Okay, now I'm dis disobeying the, the, the leadership. That don't make no sense. Somebody hired, somebody with a higher authority got to come to me and tell me to do something. Otherwise, I sit my butt right where they told me. We, you, you can't play those games. Right. That's why, and it sounds crazy, and a lot of people don't like it because these people are unjust and all that. I get it. But when these police pull you over, you, do what the, you just do what they say. Get your butt out of the car. When they say, I know you ain't got no reason to have to get out this car. I get it. And I'm not telling you this to save your life. I care less about your life. I'm telling you this as a man of God. I can care less. I can care if they, I ain't going to say I can care less if they kill you. It's not that I can care less if they kill you. But in the larger scheme of things, whether they kill you or not, it's not, it's not what, what, what the most interest is. The most interest is that we obedient to the most our God. Can you get your life? So put yourself in a position where they kill you and you did everything you were supposed to do. What will that do to the national media? Mm -hmm. Every time one of these things happen, you know what they try to say. Well, he had weed in his system. What, the, what does that have to do with anything? Right. Nothing, right? right. But, but he had weed in his system. Right? He's not some innocent saint. It was like, but you killed him, though. Like, <laughs> You killed the man. Is that what we do now? Kill people for weed? Like, it's, yeah, like by your standards, it's legal. So it's like, why is that even a thing? Right? But by our standards, it's not. So you have to look at it that the most high God is sending this stuff as a punishment to us. It has nothing to do with these people. So when they tell you to do something, do it. It may not save your life, but even if it don't save your life, guess what? They can't say nothing about you because you complied at every corner and they still killed your and butt. And when they do, it's going to be a lie. So now God got them on like multiple counts. You're a murderer and you lied on an innocent person. And I'm going to tell you, too, they're not going to lie if you comply in this and they can see it at least. Right. They're not going to lie. Guess what they're going to do? Ignore it. It's not going to make national media. That means that they had to shut up. And that's what he's saying. Why read it again? Watch this. That's what this is all about. They got to hide it. For so is the will of God that with well doing, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. They can't do the foolishness. And be like, yeah, we, we'll wait for the Michael Brown. You know what I'm saying? We'll wait for the Michael Brown. We'll, we're going to wait for the George Floyd. Right? Let me wait for somebody who got something in their system. Let me wait for somebody who's going to resist. Let me wait for the Sandra Bland who's going to be running her darn mouth. And none of this. Please don't mistake any of this as me saying that any of these beautiful people deserve to die on any of those days. Hi. All I'm saying is when you go by the standard of the most high God, right? We put ourselves in all those situations. They probably could have did what the most high God said do and complied. And they still would have got killed. I have no doubts about that. What I'm saying is if it happened that way, now you follow the will of God when it happened. And it's something after this life, right? It's something after this life and it takes away their opportunity to make excuses. Yeah, they breaking their own rules. Like by their standards, they murderers. You know what I mean? Because to the in their laws, like you're not supposed to kill an unarmed person, but they do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? So that's why they try to make they try to pick the ones that might have done something wrong so they can feel better about breaking their own laws. You don't give them any of those opportunities, then what? Potentially you go back home with your life. Like, no, you're but not even if you don't, killed. then that that puts a larger sticker for everybody else. You right. died now for everybody else. Right. So mouthing off to the police, you're not supposed to get killed for that. You know what I'm saying? Selling cigarettes illegally, you're not supposed to get killed for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like these people are just full of crap. Yeah, they, yeah, no, they, they, they wicked people. Wicked, wicked people and wicked hearts. You know what I'm saying? How you have a heart that, that cold where you can just sit here? It's just wicked hearts. Y'all got to watch that American Skin movie too. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know. Y'all want to do it. You know what I'm saying? We can do that thing over here. I just want everybody to watch it, though. Yeah, we're supposed to, I'm supposed to go to Tia House and watch it yeah. next week.
Yeah, that's a that's a that's a movie there. Um, keep going. Let's see. Where we at? As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of mal maliciousness, but as the servants of God. That boy talking to the Christians there. Right? Because you know that's how the Christians look at it. He's like, as free, but not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. Right? Because that's what the Christians look at. Christians look at, well, you know, the law is done away with lie. But law is done away with. We are under grace. And we have liberty in Christ. They are for, right? I send it up. That was that. That's how they look at. <laughs> they ain't gonna say that, right? <laughs> I can. But in their mind, that's what it is. Like, it, you know, I make a mistake here and there. No biggie. You know what I'm saying? Most like God got it covered already. Yolo, right? But he's looking at it like that's not. No, he's like, don't lose, use your liberty as a cloak. Once you do that, it's no longer liberty. No, you're a slave to sin. Hmm? I think you said something like this about not losing integrity. Uh, like that. Yeah, yeah, you got to maintain that. And yeah, now you're a slave to sin. You're not free at all. That's right. Oh, well, don't worry. When we get to Paul, he's going oh, he to break it all down, right? Oh. Watch it. Keep going. It's just, it's just Peter. And Peter breaking it down too, right? But wait until we get to darn Paul. Because he got a whole lot of books to break it down every which way. Right? Let's see. Keep going. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. Uh -huh. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For that glory is in it. If when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently. All right. Do you understand what he's saying there? <clears throat> he's saying, so listen, if I give Zahar a whooping because... He didn't obey what I told him to do, right? Go get your butt in the bed. Then I see him downstairs playing the game still. So I'll whip his butt, right? Do he have anything to say to me? That's the punishment that he should have got for not listening to me, right? However, right, if Zahar go outside and then another person comes to Zahar, and just start whooping his darn butt. Just some random parent. Just start whooping his darn butt. And Zahar didn't do nothing wrong. Now that's different. Right? If he's out there doing what I told him to do. And this other person whooped my kid. But I gave him permission to do it. Just because don't be playing in your daddy yard like that. Wop, wop, wop. And I just told him, go play in the yard. Because I don't want you playing on the inside. Right? What I got to do to this other person? We ain't going to talk about it on camera. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to talk about it on camera. You know what I'm talking about? But that's how the punishment thing goes to that other person. That's how the most high God is looking at it. He's like, listen, if you get buffeted, in other words, if you get punished for a fault that you did, your butt ought to take it patiently. You ought to sit there and be like, yeah, you're right. Right? That's what he's saying. You ought to take it patiently. You shouldn't have nothing to darn say, in other words. Right? But he said, man, it's glory from God when you get, when you suffer wrongdoing. Right? When you suffer wrongdoing, that's glory to the most high God. That puts God in a position where he has to take vengeance. Right? You have to understand, like, back to Job, right? I'm happy you mentioned that. Because that's what it was about. Uh, Satan came up to him. He's like, yo, most high God's I have you considered Job. Because he's looking at it like, oh, he going to take it. So once he get done taking it, now I, I can put the vengeance on Satan. What do you think happened to Satan at the end? Right? All this stuff is just built up vengeance to everybody who don't end up on the side of the most high God. That's how it goes. Like he just, not, look, I just need you to stay straight and don't come off of the square. Stay like abide in me. Just stay right there. If you if you go out of it, I can't help you. If you stay in there, I know it's rough. Trust me though. I'ma get they butt for you. That's what a man said, man. You look, you just sit right here, put your darn feet up and watch me make your enemies your That's what he trying. He telling them, relax. Don't even worry about it. Relax. Kick your feet up. That's your enemies down there. You know what I'm saying? Just chill. Let me handle it. 
It might take a little while, right? But it's going to get done. Why right, keep going? Let's see. Let's see if we can finish out this chapter. For this thank worthy if a man for this is thank worthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief suffering wrongfully. Mm -hmm. For that glory is in it. If we if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But when you do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. So y'all remember what we read last week, right? What happened? Right right when we finished up last week, what were we reading about? Uh, Ananias and Sapphira, I think. No. After that. They had all things common. Yeah. After that. Remember Peter? Yeah, Peter and them got in trouble. They got in trouble. Who they get in trouble with? The priests. And then what the happened? Rulers. They put them in jail. And what else happened? And the angel told them to get out. And then what? And the priest was like, what are we going to do with these people? Because everybody started to believe. Them. And, and then what? Like, leave them alone. Who said that? Uh, Caiaphas, was it? No, nah, Gamaliel, Gamaliel, right? Gamaliel. Remember Gamaliel, right? Doctor of the law. You know what I'm saying? Gamaliel, like, listen, 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 God. Y'all remember them other two fellas? You know what I'm saying? They were running around here like they had somebody. And both them boys came to nothing. We didn't have to do nothing. He like, man, we find ourselves fighting against the most high God messing with these people. He like, otherwise, they better come to nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, they come to nothing just like everybody else. But if we mess around trying to make them come to nothing and they end up that they really from God, now we fighting against God. We might as well just leave them alone. So you remember. They, they all decided to leave him alone, but what did they do? Who remembers what they did? They punched him. How? They beat him up. They buffeted him. And after that, what did Peter and the people do? They were happy. They glorified. They celebrated and glorified. This is what Peter is talking about. Like when he's writing, he's writing from his experience. That man, this man ain't just running the darn mouth. He's writing from his experience. He's in there, listen, I'm telling you, there's a glory in taking punishment with conscience to God. I'm doing it because the most high God told me to do it. Keep going. For even here unto you were called because the Messiah also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Mm -hmm. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges rightful, rightfully. That's right. Righteously. Who, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on a tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. By whose stripe you were healed. For you were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the chapter. That's good. We'll pick up next week. We'll try to finish out finish out uh First Peter. I think First Peter go all the way up to five, right? Mm, yep. All right, we'll try to finish it out. I didn't want to skip around too much though. It's too much good stuff. We'll skip. We'll probably skip around a little bit uh, next week, but I didn't want to skip around too much this week. It's good, especially the first couple chapters of Peter, man. I'm trying to tell you, like. He lay it out. He trying to he trying to make sure they understand. Like this is where we are. And the man speak. What I love about Peter's writing is he's speaking from his experience. Like you can almost tie back everything that he write to something that actually happened, right? Because he's speaking. The man is just speaking. You like he putting his heart into it. Like man, I believe this stuff. Like I'm not just telling you. He tell you in, in the second second Peter. I'm not telling you no cleverly devised scheme. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not coming up like. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you what happened, bro. Like, why are you, you know what I'm saying? What you doing? Then you look at Peter and be like, the man is serious. You can see it in his writing. Like, the man ain't playing. Like, what you mean? Like, it's not even a thought. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not even a thought in his brain that there's another way. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is it. Like, what you mean? And you see that. That's been his attitude. When y'all sure come to him, like, oh, you going to turn around too? What that man say? Where am I gonna go? You got the words to life. There's no other in his mind. There's no other way, and that's the faith we gotta have, man. That's if we ain't got that, man. It's like we lacking in the place. In his mind, there's no other way. Like it's not even a consideration. Like what you talking about? And you can see it in his writing. You just sitting there looking at it, man. This man just he just pouring it out, reading from all, just giving you all his experience. You know what I'm saying? Everything he been through. Like, man, this, listen, I'm telling you, if you go through this, this, that, another, you'd be like, man, that sounds a lot like what happened in Matthew. That sounds a lot like what happened earlier in Acts. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, nah, that's me. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I'm telling you, I know, not because, like, 
Like, nobody taught me this to tell you. Like, I went through this. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to let you know this is how it worked. Yeah. All right? Any questions? No. All right, well, let's pray out. I know you